Hi everybody, Motorcycle Mariner here with Mass Hole Engineering. Uh, in this video I'm going to walk you through making an adapter cable to plug into your diagnostic port on your fuel injected URL motorcycle. Uh, with that adapter cable you'll eventually be able to plug into a PC or use Bluetooth to connect to an Android phone and balance your throttle bodies through your ECUs. You're going to have to order a couple items to make this adapter cable. Uh, the first item is a Molex 150L series 6 pin female socket. The Molex part number is 19418 About $5 at Mosier Electronics. You're also going to have to order a minimum of six of these Molex open barrel crimp female sockets. This is a 22 to 18 gauge. The Molex part number is 19420-0010. These are about 18 cents from Mosier Electronics. Uh, you're going to need a minimum of six. I would order a couple extras just so you can get the crimp correct here on the open barrel end. The next item you're going to order, you have two choices depending on how you want to connect, whether it's USB or Bluetooth. Your first option is the OBD Link SX scan tool with USB. This will connect you to a PC. It's about 30 bucks at scantool.net. Your second option is the OBD Link LX Bluetooth adapter. This one's about $50 at scantool.net. Uh, the only advantage to this one is you can connect to Android phones with the app and you'll be able to have a tachometer on your handlebar mount if you have one. They both come with an activation code for the free OBD Wiz software. After that, you're going to have to do the OBD Wiz professional add on for about 40 bucks from obdsoftware.net. The last item you're going to have to order is a OBD2 extension cable. I ordered about a five foot or a six foot. Um, it's a standard OBD2 end. This is a 16 pin OBD2 female end, which will be on one end of the cable. The other end, you'll have the male end. Mine's already cut. The male end is also 16 pin, same thing. You can see the numbers in there, so designating which pin is for what. That's going to become very useful later. You're going to need those numbers. Uh, everything in total is somewhere around $100, maybe a little more with shipping. Once you've purchased everything, you can start making your uh, adapter cable. I'm going to start on the Molex end and the open barrel connectors. These open barrel connectors, crimp connectors, have a uh, two tabs here, and these are to crimp around your conductor. The other two tabs up top here are to crimp around your insulation, and this will give you strain relief, so you can pull on the core just a little bit if you have to. Um, your final product of your crimp will should look like this. Up here, you can see the two tabs are bent over around your conductor. Down here, the two tabs are bent over around your insulation, giving you that strain relief. And to do that, you're going to need an open barrel crimper. I have a ratcheting open barrel crimper, which crimps both at the same time. You can see the beds down here are a little larger. These beds uh, will allow you to crimp both at the same time, the conductor and the insulation. You can see the arches up top. These arches up top uh, bend the tabs on the open barrel and make the crimp. Uh, this is a decent crimper. Uh, you can get a more basic crimper online at Amazon or eBay, and they're single crimps. So you can crimp the conductor first and go back and crimp the insulation for your strain relief, or vice versa, whichever one you want to crimp first. These are only like 10 bucks, Amazon and eBay. They'll do the job just as good. So after you've made all these uh, six pigtails, you're going to have to insert them in the back of the uh, Molex 150L series connector. Um, you can see the little notches there. You're going to have to actually line up your open barrel connector with those notches. Um, all these directions are online. Uh, you can could, you could see the, uh, the polarization feature is what they're calling it. And uh, that's what's here, this little tab 
on the Molex connector. You can see it right there. That little tab is going to have to line up with all those little notches in there for each one as you put it in. So I'll put the uh, top one in here, top left, and as you slide it in, it goes through some rubber, for, which is for waterproofing. And then as you slide it in, you'll hear it click, and it's in all the way. Once you have all six of them in, you can lock it down like that. And that's pretty much the final locking of making this connector once you have all six of these in there. If you by accident put them in the wrong pin or you want to change them later or just something doesn't feel right to you, you can just take a screwdriver, put it in here, and pry the lock back up. After the lock's pried back up, you're going to want to take a paper clip or something and shove it in this little round hole here, which is, again, all online, all these instructions. So you just put it in, push it in, hold it in, and the wire pulls out. And you can do that repetitively over and over and move all your wires around. Okay, so now you should have your uh, Molex connector done with the six pigtails coming out of the back and all locked in. Just put that aside for now. You're going to have to take your uh, OBD2 extension cable that you bought. And uh, you'll have the two ends like this. You're going to want to cut off the male end. You need to keep the female end on. That's what you need. So just cut the male end off. And you're only going to use the male end for reference. You don't really need it anymore except for the numbers inside here to uh, find out what pins are what. The pin numbers are standard and you can find those online. Um, here you got the 16 pins and uh, what they're all for online, whether it's can high, can low, battery power. And uh, you're not going to use all 16 pins, you're only going to use five of the 16. At this point, you're going to want to identify the uh, five wires that you want to use with the uh, five different pins. Uh, the pins you're going to be using are uh, 4, 5, 6, 14, and 16. So if you look inside the uh, mail end that you kept, just for reference, well, way inside, you, can, you can't really see it here, um, there's numbers inside on each pin, and those are standard. So I've chose to identify pin 16 at this point. And you're going to have to identify which one pin 16 is on all these colored wires. I don't think these colors are standard, so that's why you're going through and identifying them. So right now I have a multimeter uh, connected to the purple wire and with continuity. And then I'm going to look for pin 16 and with the purple wire on there and the meter touching pin 16, I now know that pin 16 over there is the purple wire and you're gonna have to go through and do that for pins 4, 5, 6, 14 and 16 and uh, identify each one of those wires. Once you've identified all five of the wires in the uh, OBD extension cable you're gonna have to start soldering them onto your uh, Molex connector with the pigtails and uh, to identify where the ODB wires need to go on the Molex connector, you can use this diagram. Uh, this is the actual connector on your Ural motorcycle. And you're only going to be using four pins there. So six can go on the top left, which is can high. Uh, Fourteen can go on the bottom left, which is can low. Uh, the top center one is actually going to get two wires to it. You're going to get number four, the chassis ground, and number five, the uh, signal ground. And the bottom center one is supply voltage number 16. The other two on the right, you're actually not going to use. No wires will go to them. And the only reason I made pigtails there is so they can get shrink wrap on them with the extension cable and uh give you more tension relief and more strength to your uh, adapter cable. So again, you're looking at the Ural motorcycle 
diagnostic port where your Molex connector is going to go into. This is your uh, Molex 150L series connector. You want to make sure that on the top left, you're going to solder number 6, can high. On the bottom left, you're going to do number 14, can low. On the top center, you're going to do two wires. You want to make sure you have number 4, chassis ground, and number 5, signal ground. In the bottom center, you want number 16, supply voltage, or the battery voltage. And the two right ones, they are dead. You're not going to use them. I'm only using them to shrink wrap in with the rest at the final shrink wrap for um, some tension relief. So you have some strength to your cable. So now that you have all your wires identified, you're going to want to take your OBD2 extension cable with the uh, female end on it. And you're going to want to strip back some wire back where you cut it on the, uh, on the other end. You're going to want to strip back some wire. Uh, just strip back the, uh, the five wires that you've identified that you're going to need to use. Strip those back and you could start soldering all those together with your uh, your pigtail here to where they whichever pins belong on whichever wires that you've identified already and then you can uh, shrink wrap each individual conductor together and eventually shrink wrap over all of them to get some form of tension relief including the uh, two spares shrink wrap those in there remember uh, four and five do have to go together on that center pin so when you're done you should have a extension cable that kind of resembles something like this. I would go ahead and double check all these pins again when you're done just to make sure that everything is uh, connected properly and you can use you know this diagram with the pins 1 through 16 and ring it out with a multimeter to the uh, Molex 150 and just make sure you have everything connected properly with that diagram. I hope this video is helpful and assist you in making an adapter cable for your diagnostic port on your uh, fuel injected URL motorcycle. We'll have another video coming telling you how to set up the OBD Wiz software and hopefully another video after that showing you how to set it up on the bike and uh, utilize it. Good luck with that and uh, go Red Sox, uh, Yankees suck! <laughs>